Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Pits of Motor Cast. This is yours, Dave. I got my special guest, driver of the Madness Nitro Funny Car, Jeff Gregory. How's it going, Jeff? Oh, pretty good, pretty good. How about you guys? Not bad, not bad at all. So, 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 Jeff, um, the Ma- Madness uh, Nitro Funny Car. How, how long has that car been around now? Uh, the car is just debuted for this year. Um, we purchased the car last year and uh, went went totally through it. We did a lot of testing and stuff. Got my license. Uh, I come from drag boats, the top fuel hydros, and uh, we went to our very first race, uh, the reunion, and we we uh, ended up on the bump and we got bumped out, so we ended up seventeenth. So this is our first year out, our full year. And we're just a whole bunch of drag boat guys uh, trying to go car racing. Nah. So what, what made you decide to do the car racing? Um, always been a big fan of the cars. Um, and the boats kind of petered out. And there's nowhere to race a top fuel boat right now currently. So uh, we went ahead and we sold everything and went to uh, car racing. And so far it's been a, you know, good learning curve for us um we've we've been having some good fun and meet some good people so we're already dipping into the uh 590s so we're on track to keep on going and i i'm thinking in a couple more races we should start getting competitive now you guys went up to the march meet yeah yeah we did um we ended up um it was basically driver air um the thing's starting to get a little loose, and I didn't know whether to hold on to it and push it through these little bumps and all that stuff. I just kind of don't know where the edge is yet, so I'm creeping up on that, and um, we're just getting more laps, but basically the car was there, just I wasn't, but that won't happen this next one. So how many passes have you made in the funny car now? Uh, in this car... This is its, uh, like, sixth full pass. And then uh, before that, I went to the Frank Hawley School, and uh, we spent a day there and got my license and all that. But, yeah, the car is pretty, pretty new. So who, who signed off for your license? Uh, Frank Hawley. Well, Frank himself. Over there. Yep, yep. So how was your uh, first time experience in a, in a Nitro Funny Car? Uh, it's wild. Uh, I tell you what, it's just, uh, big, it's just a big difference from the boats. Um, you, you know, the boats, the whole crew pushes me off and I'm holding on to a rope and I start it, you know, start everything, slam the lid and go. And this thing, I got the whole crew around, around me. I'm doing a burnout. I'm putting the thing in reverse and the motor's in front of me. That's just wild. Yeah, I know. Ed, Ed, Eddie Knox used to do the boat thing, too. Yep, yep. I uh, used to compete against him for many, many years. And, uh, you know, just kind of watching him and jumping over. I mean, so far, it's a bunch of good guys. And I've uh, been having some fun. And it's just a big learning curve. You, you know, I mean, the water is moving all the time. And people are like checking to see if the track is sticky and I'm like what what do you mean is the track sticky I'm used to water so <laughs> you, you, you know I'm like a fish out of water but we're learning and um you know we're making some decent passes um I just have to know when to lift and when not to do and that's what our big learning per you know curve is like right now yeah, you, drag racing is all one big family, my friend. You know, you, you have you a, lot, a lot of people help you out and give you advice in drag racing. Oh, yeah. No, um, this last uh, race at March meet, um, I had, um, you know, a lot of people come over and try to give me some advice. But the, uh, the uh, best one was... Um, when uh, Caps, he jumped in our tow vehicle and he goes, how's it going? And I'm sitting there going, well, you know, I, I just don't know. This thing's starting to shake and stuff and starting to move around and I'm clicking off of it. And, you know, I don't know whether how hard how hard I could push this thing before it turns left or right. And 
So I was describing it to him, and he looks at me and he goes, keep your foot in it, just go through it. And I'm like, you know, it's so easy for a guy to say, and he's got hundreds of thousands of passes in a car, and I'm just hearing stuff that's totally different because the motor's in front of me um, instead of behind me. Right. So a lot of different noises, um, and I'm thinking, oh, the motor's coming apart, and I'm lifting, and they're like, no, dude, the, the motor's just fine. It just grunted. You, you, you know, it's just getting a big load on it and really starting to pull, and I'm like, oh, okay, you know, is that what that was? So it's just just learning. Yeah. So now who, who's your whole crew that, you know, gets that keeps that car running? Um, we have... Um, Gosh, it's all of our boat guys from, um, you know, from Scott that used to come from boats and there's Howard and Dale, um, and, uh, Dale Murray's my part is my partners on this car. Um, he came from boats too. We all came from a boat called Madness with Ron Braxma. And that's how we, uh, came up with the name Madness and, uh, all black. And then the, um, the triple nickel 555 was, uh, Dale's dad owned the very first nitro funny car in, um, NHRA. And it was called, uh, 555, the triple nickel. His name was, uh, Dean Murray. So I called NHRA and got that license or got that number back out of retirement so we could stick it on the car and run, run, run that car in his honor. And they said they would be, you know, happy to do it. So. You know, we're kind of just a whole bunch of boat guys uh, learning to go car racing, and there's a there's a big learning curve. You know, like everyone says, all oh, the motors the same. No, it's not. Yeah, the motor is the same, but the torque curve is totally you know different. The load on the motor, um, you're dealing with tires. The gear ratio changes as we're going down the track. We're not used to that. Um, I'm having to shift it now. Uh, boats, you don't shift. Um, just all kinds of kind of little things that all add up to a big difference. But the speed, I'm used to the speed. The speed doesn't scare me. It's just getting there and all the sounds and the thing moving around. Now, what kind of what kind of body is that on the funny car? It's a Z28. Yeah, the body, body look, it's a nice looking body. Uh, thank, thank you. Things really nice. We, uh, went up there and, uh, we went to Canada to purchase the car and, um, it was in really good shape, but still us not knowing what we're doing, we tore it all the way down and went through it and, um, you know, didn't find anything wrong with, you know, with it, but it was a big peace of mind. And then we went ahead and we got the hauler, uh, out of Reno that was made for cars and uh, it just made it easier getting rid of the boat stuff and buying buying stuff that was meant for cars mm. and then here we got I think it's four more weeks and we go to Boise for that race now how, how many events are you looking to run for the rest of the year uh, at least six to seven for sure we want to do the full season you know, we're going to go back to Kentucky, too, um, Oklahoma, uh, you name it. We're going to do them all. At least that's the plan. <laughs> yeah. So now, what what size fuel pump you guys got in that car? Uh, what is that? What size fuel pump you have in a funny car? Oh, the fuel pump is just a, a 22 gallon. Uh, that's all we're allowed in this class is a 22 gallon, um, nitro pump. And we're right, and right now we're running it, I'm shifting it about 89 to, uh, 9200 RPM. Somewhere in there I'm shifting it. So it's doing pretty good. Um, everything seems to be happy. We're not hurting any parts, you know, at this point, but, uh, we're waiting for, for the driver to come around and really wind her up and let her rip. Yeah, that driver, Jeff, you got to get that driver going. <laughs> oh, I know. You, you know, I wish I could fire him, but uh, <laughs> yeah. our motto is that uh, if we fire you, 
your pu- your punishment is you just got to come back tomorrow and work for free. Yeah. So, uh, you, you know, getting fired isn't no big deal around us, you, you, you know. But, yeah, no, I'm getting it. It's like I know I'm not scared of the car. It's just different sounds, different feelings. And I'm like, oh, what is that? And I would rather step off the gas and be embarrassed that I didn't take it all the way than uh, stay on it and really make a dumb mistake and put the thing in the wall or something like that. Um, I don't want to do that and embarrass the team and also myself. But, you know, we're not we're not out to hurt no one. But, you know, as soon as we get some more laps under us, um, we're really excited to start leaning on this thing and really trying to make a charge and trying to, I mean, if we could go to a final round our first year, that, that would be great. Now, how many years did you do the bull racing for? Uh, I got, uh, a little over 15 years in top fuel. And then from there, I, um, raced my own boat, um, in top alcohol for two years. And then from there, when I was 16, I started racing um, USAC midgets, the uh, uh, non-wing cars. Right. Like uh, you see at the Chili Bowl and stuff just like that. Yeah, I grew up racing those in Southern California and stuff. And um, always had had my heart set, you know, set on drag drag boats and drag cars. And look at look at me now, <laughs> you know. So what what made you so get into? a little crazy. What made you get into drag boats? Uh, my family did it, you know, did that kind of deal. And in Southern California, the drag boats at that, you know, back in the 80s were really big. And uh, always seeing, you know, when you see a boat, a top fuel boat especially, jump out, take a splash, and then it just thunders at like 250 to 270. It's just... uh it shakes the ground. There, there's just nothing like it. And right there, I was hooked. I, you know, knew when I was a little kid, I have to drive one, like one of those boats for sure. Now with, the, now so, with, the, uh, with the top fuel boat, were you pretty successful? Oh yeah, we got a lot of wins, a lot of championships, a lot of, um, you know, just a lot of wins is overall. And uh, we, we kind of didn't know it. I went through some bad accidents and got back on the horse and really started racing hard again. And then, uh, not, I kind of started to slow down and lose and lose a little bit of my drive because I got tired of the, um, travel. And, and then, uh, when Lucas pulled, pulled out of the series and there's nowhere to, you know, to, uh, race the boats, we went to this car and you know what? I, I found myself, the whole crew, um, just got that fire back. It was like um, something new. It was a new challenge. And we were just pumped up and ready to, you know, conquer this thing. We want to figure it out because it, it's just totally different. You set the engine up totally different. The clutch is set totally different. Um, just everything. You know, and we have props on the boat that they don't grow, but they spin and grab and they put a load on the motor. Well, these tires do the same thing, but they grow and it changes the gear ratio. And it just, it just, it's just hard for us to wrap our heads around. But, but we're learning it. Yep. Now, how about with the alcohol boat? Did you have success with that one too? Yes. Um, yeah, it was a big learning curve going from the uh, midget racing cars to the alcohol boat. Um, I got with a guy named Bob Miner, and he built me a motor. And Norm Grimes, he built me the uh, the capsule and the boat, and uh, it, it, it was a 501 Curtis, and uh, we did really good with that. Um, and then, uh, you know, like all boats, you you you, uh, you never wear them out. You kind of crash them, and then you get a new one, <laughs> and uh, crash that one. And I was building a new boat, and um, my good friend Ron Ron uh, Braxma, he was always. You know, my good friend, and he supplied a lot of the parts for his, for his, for my racing. And then he was like, as soon as I was finished, he was like, well, what are you going to do with that thing? I'm like, well, I'm going to race it. He goes, well, why don't you jump in my my boat, my uh, top fuel boat? And then there it went from there. I raced with him, and then I raced with Jay Hart 
tuning in. Uh, he just passed away a couple years ago, but um, I, I raced with him and then um, Tommy Thompson and Tom Sorcy, uh in their top fuel boat. So I've been a, I've been around in the top fuel boats, had a lot of success, and I think it was just um, we were getting tired of doing the same old thing, and this is just something different. But um, with our same group of guys, so it's really nice. Now, what would you consider to be your fondest memory of your uh, boat racing? Um, wow, that is a hard one. Um, you know, I got a couple. Um, one is definitely dri- driving Ron uh, Braxman's uh, top fuel boat. Um, he's kind of like the Dale Earnhardt, Earnhardt, but of boats. And that was a huge step. And then... Uh, Probably my first victory um, with Jay Hartunian in uh, Whiskey River top field boat. That was just huge. That that tr- that trophy still today sits in my office. Um, can't can't I just can't replace it with any other one. It was sweet. Um, we've had some bad crashes um, that really changed my life, changed the industry, did all that, um, but. It was always coming back. Um, you know, I, I love the people. I love the crowd. And um, it's one thing to, uh, to, to to have a bad crash and take you a couple years to rehabilitate and you get back in a boat and make a pass and the crowd goes crazy. It's kind of, you know, it gets your old blood pumping. <laughs> yeah. Well, well knock, on, knock on wood, Jeff, you... You won't have any accidents in the funny car. Yeah, no, no, exactly. At least I won't be drowning, huh? You know, at least we're on land this, you know, is this time. And, uh, this, and you know, in the car, it's uh, fine. It's kind of cool because my son is doing the left side of the engine, so it's uh, kind of cool to uh, see him starting to turn the screws is on the engine. I look over there at him, and I'm like, wow. It's like I don't, I don't know if this is good or bad. I don't want. I don't want him in the seat, and he's starting to follow my footsteps already. Like last week, and we were in Red Bluff, and he was racing the winged um, outlaw carts there. So he wants to get in one. I just tell him to sit back and learn first. <laughs> Baby steps. I don't think I'm ready to see him in a boat or a car soon. So, how old is your son? years old but he's uh 20 he'll be 21 here in a couple months and he goes to uh, chico state college he's doing really good and um he he ra- he races um the outlaw carts and then from then he comes on to my team and um he uh, does the left side of the engine that's full time and he sometimes does other parts and helps us drive the rig and he kind of does a lot of stuff Keeps me in line. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, when you were younger, did you watch drag racing at all? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, big John Force fan, always. Just he was a uh, big, loud, obnoxious, in your face, and if he said something, he, you know, he would do it. Uh, Garlitz, I mean, all those guys were always my biggest fans, and. You know, they still are. I mean, I still like going to the car races and talking to these guys. It's just, uh, I have so much experience. And they're the pioneers in the sport. I mean, not only making the horsepower and all the, the fabrication, but all the safety stuff, too. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, we're actually really lucky to have those guys still around. Yep. So now, where, where do you get all your fire safety equipment from? Um, I've had um, Simpson. Um, it's a funny story. Um, they watched one of my uh, really bad crashes, and they were stalking me on Facebook, and I didn't know it. And I went to a guy that got a good deal at Simpson. I was going to buy a helmet and stuff through him. And he goes, you know, they'll sponsor you if you just give them a call. And I says, no way, really? And, he, and I go, Aaron goes, yeah. So I called him up, and Simpson, they... They take care of myself and um, 
my whole team of anything that they need, my son, and then we got Safety Clean that they came on board this year, and also E3 Spark Spark Plugs and Torco Fuels. Um, they're they're all pitching in a lot on our car. Um, we uh, we had them all on the boats, but they came over to the car side, and um, it's been really nice to have those guys have my back and you know make the big jump. And you know, as you know, there's no TV. There's no TV in the nostalgia fuel cars. Right. So, um, but but they're on board 100. percent I mean, it's been really nice. And uh, PSI Superchargers that they stayed with me too. They supplied me with all my blowers, and um, it's just been really nice. It's just a big family. And I'm sure you're always looking for more sponsors. Oh yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> We can. Uh, we always need them. This uh, this fuel car. Uh, we've already. Uh, we we had we had a number in our heads of what it was going to cost to put a team together. Well, we doubled that. So, whoops. I guess uh, we're not good accountants. Um, we're better racers than accountants. Let me tell you. But yeah, this thing's gotten really expensive. But hopefully, um, it kind of calms down because we had to buy everything at first. You know, because nothing from the boat could transfer over to the cars. Nothing. So we had to buy everything. and It's always an expensive year, yeah. they said. It's the first couple years. So hopefully it'll calm down. Now, are you running on 100% nitro? Uh, yeah, we either go anywhere from 89% all the way up to 98 Somewhere in there that, you know, depends on the, al- the altitude and the air. And uh, how hard we want to uh, break some parts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, in uh, Boise, we're going to be stepping on it pretty good because they don't take 16. They, they only take the quick eight. So there's going to be a lot of us um, that go up there in the funny car class. And all these guys are veterans. I mean, they all have minimum 10 years of driving and tuning experiences on me. So we're going to have to really... You know, put, put, put our heads down and really click, click off a good number. Yeah, ho- make the show. yeah, hopefully they get this whole uh, coronavirus mess cleared up so we, so that it doesn't bother drag racing. Oh, I know. We've all been talking about it like crazy. It's, um, you know, we're still, we, we have the flights booked. We have uh, the hotel rooms. Um, everything is a go until they call us and tell us to stay home. Um, I got blowers that's being, like, restripped. I got CP pist- pistons that's making me some more pistons. I mean, the whole crew is thrashing to get the car all turned around for this next race. So we're going to go. Or we have plans on going unless they tell us to stay home. But, um yeah, this virus is something crazy. So, just hope no one gets it and keep our head down and plow through it. Yeah, all the, all the craziness at the grocery stores, man. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. It's like uh, my wife, you know, she just, came, she just came home and said, I couldn't buy, buy any eggs. And I'm like, what do you mean you couldn't buy eggs? And she's like, no grocery store had eggs. And I'm like... That's just crazy to comprehend. Yeah. I'm like, wow. You know, that's just crazy. I'm like, California, we're out of eggs? I'm like, seriously. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> these, these people think it's like a zombie apocalypse or something. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't even understand. And I, you know, everyone is walking around in masks and everything. And they probably think I'm weird. I just get up in the morning and go to work <laughs> you know I'm like I have bills and I got a nitro car to pay for so I gotta go to work <laughs> I can't I can't worry about no virus you can walk around with your racing mask on for... <laughs> yeah exactly exactly that's what I need I need to just wear my mask around <laughs> that we start the car up with but yeah it's just it's crazy I mean maybe they're right maybe they're wrong uh I feel we all have a number that's stamped inside of us, and when that date hits, you're done. And I want to live every day to the fullest. Yeah, there's there's no yeah. uh, there's no hand sanitizer left in the stores, no toilet paper, no paper towels. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, so 
someone's making the money, huh? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I wish I was making the toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. I'd be charging double. <laughs> <laughs> so now, you know? now with 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 the six six times you've had this funny car, what what's been the quickest pass you've made so far? Uh, five ninety one. Five ninety one. Now, where were you at when you did that? Uh, we were uh, at the reunion last year. Hot rod reunion. So we did a. Yeah, so we did a five nine uh, ninety one, and then this and this, this time we had. It seems like I'm not make, making up excuses, but every car in front of us was oiled down, and you know they, they had oiled down the track, and they were there. And uh, Bakersfield did a great job at their Famosa to redo the track, but that's when the car would be moving around, and I didn't know being a new driver driver was out of oil. Was that I'm just getting out of the groove? Was it, you know, what was it? And that's when I'd step off the gas. And, you know, having the crew chief and Ron Caps there to help me and everything and guide me, and they, you know, they were like, no, that's just what these cars do when they're on a real good pass. They just move around a little bit and make these noises because they're grunting really hard because you have that um, those two rear tires just planted so hard he says yeah, the bad thing is that thing was on a great pass and he lifted <laughs> he says don't worry about it don't worry about those noises and don't worry about it moving around that's that's not a lot of movement and to me it felt like I was going five lanes on a freeway <laughs> you know left to right but the video camera didn't lie. It was just a little bit. Now, are you planning on going back to the Hot Ride reunion this year? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, we want to hit. We want to hit them all. We're starting to sell some T-shirts. Um, you know, that's the only. That I mean, that's our only income for this race car, selling T-shirts. So we're starting to get a following. A lot of people are starting to follow us. And, you know, listen to broadcasts and stuff just like yours. And they're just, they're starting to buy stuff. They're starting to show up, come out and shake my hand and look at the car, take pictures of the car, um, you know, stuff like that. And that's what we like. I mean, that's really why we're doing it. I mean, there's no money to be made here. I mean, if we were smart, we would keep that money, not spend it <laughs> because there's no return. Yeah. It just makes for good conversation and good meeting people and stuff like that. Now, do you, do you ever th do you think you'd ever run like a one of those funny car chaos events? Yeah, I would love to. I just love the opportunity, you know, get some more laps, and uh, most definitely, most definitely, I'm already starting to feel comfortable in the car. It's just the sounds. And it moving around, so most definitely. Yeah, I think Chris Chris Graves is doing a pretty good job doing that funny car cast. Yeah, he's doing really good. Yep, he's doing very good. You, you just you just have to get used to doing an eighth mile race. Yep. Yeah, they race. Uh, what 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 is that? Like anything goes eight mile, and it's just like wow. And I've seen um, like. Uh, Kevin Kinsley, he comes from boats and he does that deal. Yep. And um, I know him very is this very well. And I'm sitting there going, you know, what are you guys doing there back east? And he goes, oh yeah, that, you know, this is the new thing. And he goes, it's it's like a big party. You come out here and you do run what you run to eighth mile. And I was like, really? And he's like, oh yeah. Yeah. It gets serious. As long as it has a funny car body on it, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that might be something that we'll do when we're traveling back there between events or something. Who knows? Yep. Now, now, when you're out on the track, Jeff, do you have any uh, pre-race rituals or superstitions when you're out there on the starting line? Um, no. Um, I do like to get in the car first um, and just relax. That's kind of 
always been my thing is in the boats or the cars. I like to get it. I like to be in the car first and get strapped in and get a good sweat going and just close my eyes and visualize the past. And then other than that, I'm just waiting to fire that murder and get it done. Now, I know you said the name Madness came from the boat. So how, how did the name Madness come about when you named the boat? Um, that, that was Ron Braxma's uh, name of his top, top field boat that I drove. And that's how I met uh, Ron and became very good, close, personal friends. And I looked up to the man a lot. Uh, and then I met one of the teammates that I have today on is, is on his team. So when we were thinking about putting this car together, we always would, you know, you remember what Ron and you remember this, we got to do it the way Ron would do it and all this way. And he was just a big men, uh, big mentor to us and taught us a lot about drag boat racing. So we're like, you know what he talked about? Um, like some, someday getting a funny car. So, you know, we all, we always had we had three choices of the colors. There was shiny black, dark black, or light black. So we all laughed and said it's black, <laughs> and uh, we painted it black. And then uh, we just said, you know, we should name this thing Madness because this is where we all come from. And then we did that, and we we're talking to Dale and his late father that passed away to get his number. And it was just like, they always pushed us to go fun car racing, but we were always hard-headed. Didn't do it. Stayed in the boats. Now, what kind of preparation goes into getting this funny car ready for a weekend of racing? Oh, uh, it goes uh, all the way down to the bare chassis. Um, we got a clutch cutter that uh, cuts all the clutches, so we will carry at least six packs with us. Um, I mean, we go through the motor, complete the fuel pumps, the blowers get all sent, sent back to PSI to be freshened up. Um, there's a lot of maintenance. Um, and then, like, the, well, before we go back, uh, back east, we just called up Goodyear we, that we need all new tires on our truck and our trailer because um, we, found, we found out just the age of the tires. I mean, they're in great shape, but you're starting to get weather cracked. Well, right there, seven thousand dollars in tires, just for the race rig. Get us to the racetrack. So, you know that thing has to be taken down to get all new tires, have them balanced. Um, you know, service the truck and the generate all the generators, charge the batteries, fuel this thing. Um. Gosh, there's so much that goes into it. I mean, each one of us has a, a certain job that does a little bit of everything from like even our t-shirts to ordering those from 51, 50, um, 50 apparel. They ha handle all of our t-shirts and they help sell our t-shirts just in contact with those guys and let them know where we're going to be. And then like safety clinic, <laughs> let them know where we're going to be and we can stop by like one of their venues on the way. So it's a big ordeal to get a car to the track without the virus. <laughs> yeah. so, so what kind of tires are you running on a funny car? Uh, we're running the Goodyear's on the funny car. Um, they're working really good. Um, we did try the others and cause the others, the, uh, uh those Thompsons, they came, they, they came on the car. We tried those, and it just seems like with our, the way our car sets up, it likes the good years at this point. It really sticks the tire good. Um, and so far, that's not our weak link. So we'll stay with them for now. I mean, nothing is permanent because you're always trying to go faster and faster. So there might be a day where we have to switch brands. Now, as far as your merchandise, like T-shirts, do you have an online store where people can buy shirts online yet? Yeah, if you go to our um, website on Facebook, there, there's uh, Madness, uh, Kill, uh, um, Funny Car. If you go to there, 
that you can um, order the uh, t-shirts, the hats. We're start we're starting to come come out with some sweatshirts, some hoodies, all that kind of stuff. We even have women's tees. Um, we're going to start carrying a different color um, than, than just black. We're just going to go with like an ash color too. So yeah, there's going to be more and more stuff for sale. Like every two weeks, we're going to be starting to come out with something new. Um, I'm a real particular, um, cause I'm a t-shirt guy myself. I love to wear t-shirts all the time. So I don't like a cheap t-shirt. I like a very top end t-shirt that's going to last. Right. Um, I hate those t-shirts that you buy and they just fall apart or they shrink or you can see through them. Um, I hate that. So all of our stuff is top quality. Um, again, damn it. I wish we would buy the cheap stuff. We'd make more money, but <laughs> that's not who we are. You, you, you know, I want some, someone to wear my shirt for 10 years, but keep coming by the truck, by the tray, by the trailer and getting a new one. You know, yeah, I like that stuff. I like it when they say, "Hey, you, you know, you have good quality stuff." And it's like that's right. That's what we all stand for. Now, Jeff, what would you consider to be uh, some of the milestones of your boat racing career? Um, championships. Um and alcohol and fuel were huge. Um, those were some big ones with the family, um, all there. Um, I had my wife, my daughter, my son there, uh, when I wrapped up a top fuel one with Jay Hartunian. Um, let's see, uh, when I got a Castrol sponsor for the alcohol boat, that was big for, you know, for me, I thought, you know, I made it to the big time Then I found out what sponsors want a return on their investment that I figured out about sponsors and how you have to make them money <laughs> to keep giving you money. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I've, I've learned a lot. It's mainly the people. I've met some great people that are some of my best friends, you know, and some that I miss dearly. You know, because we went car racing, but um, it's just one of those things where I just tell them, you got to come to car races and hang out and we'll barbecue and have a beer. Now, how about with the USAC midget racing? Any, any milestones with that? Oh, yeah. Uh, I got a lot of track championships. Um, only one USAC championship, but um, you know what was really good is um, here at the March meet, I had... Uh, one of the presidents, um, Tommy Hunt of USAC, he came into the pits because he was a big fan. And I used to race, you know, the USAC midgets with, with him and his son, and he was the president. He came and gave me a big old hug, and he knew my son was racing the midgets now, too. And he looked over at him, and my son, you know, he's almost 21 years, you know, years old, and he's got a full beard, and he's doing the cylinder heads and he's like that's Teddy and I'm like yeah and he's like hurry up I gotta have a USAC guy that makes the march meet <laughs> and I'm like man I'm trying it, it was just really cool to see people from my past <laughs> follow my career um, that's pretty cool and then when I take my son to the chili bowl and stuff and I'm walking around I see all the racers like Josh Lachatos and uh, the cruiser uh Cruisman, and they walk up to me, and we're talking about racing back in the day. And my son's like, "Do you used to race with these guys?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Man, you're my hero." But then <laughs> it goes back to chump <laughs> really quick. You, you know, dad only gets cool for a little bit, and then I go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, Jeff. I'm going to ask you a few fun questions here before we close out. Yeah. Well, yeah. Outside outside of drag racing, any other hobbies? Um, racing with my son. I know that's a bad answer, but <laughs> oh, riding my Harley. I love my Harley, man. All right. What What is your favorite food you like to eat? Mexican food. Favorite beverage. 
freakingly boring. Just water, believe it or not. Yeah, water's good for you. Uh, what's your favorite movie of all time? Um, Top Gun and the new ones coming out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's your biggest pet peeve? Uh, people that say I can't. I hate that word, can't. <laughs> Favorite music? Rock and roll. Favorite rock and roll band? ACDC, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that always gets you pumped for drag racing, man. Sons in the country, and I just can't stand it. I just tell them, shut that shit off, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's rock and roll all the way. You know, from Motley Crue to ACDC to oh, yeah, you name go. it. You put on like, I listen to it. You put on like Kickstart My Heart or uh, Thunderstruck. There you go. Oh, oh, yeah, all the time. And that's what's always, you know, on my Spotify, on my phone, uh, 24-7. That's what I listen to. I mean... If I was like to calm down with the family and not blast the music, it would be the Eagles. And still they like will glare at me. They're like, it's always rock and roll. And I'm like, uh, yeah, yep, exactly. <laughs> You'll be rocking in your rocking chair listening to rock and roll. Oh, for sure, for sure. For now, sure. Now, when you were growing up as a kid, Jeff, what was your favorite cartoon? It was, uh, no, not a lot of people remember this. It was the Cheeto commercial because the guy drove a chopper. <laughs> and he used to race up and down, get, you know, getting his che you know, his Cheetos. I still look for that guy on Cheeto bags and everything. I think they retired him. All right, now, as far as uh, your, your drag boat racing, what, did you have a most embarrassing moment ever? Um... Yeah, probably every time I get out of bed. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, embarrassing moment. Um, you know, I have so many of them. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, they probably have a lot of them on TV. Um, I can't think of... Oh, yeah, I did. Um, Harry Boyd, he does, he has a broadcast, a little, little, radio, a little radio show, and he works for Speed Vision. And uh, he was doing an interview, and I didn't know it. They set me up. They had my gas mask, and they put on the seal grease, and then they put in the, um, the air cleaner parts. They put air fresheners, really strong ones. And he came up, and the TV... Uh, cameras were all there and they're like oh Jeff Gregory so how do you breathe is when you're starting this thing and all the fumes and I grabbed my mask and I put it on and oh this is how I do it they started laughing <laughs> and I'm like what do you mean well then I took it off and it was grease all over my face <laughs> and that's just how it was one of those things where you know the TV guys they're like family yeah Harry Boyd uh, Kenny Sargent they're, you know, they're like, like Kenny, Sar Kenny Sargent spent the very first night of one of my worst wrecks in Missouri with me um, because my family it wasn't there and he didn't fly out to the next day. So it's just a close family. Anyone that's around me, um, we're close. Now, it's funny because they all will make fun of me, but outside the pits, they're like, no one makes fun of Jeff. But boy, let me tell you, when we go back to the hotel and we're eating or we're in the truck, trust me, I'm the butt of every joke. <laughs> well, Jeff, I want to thank you very much for taking time to do this interview. That's no problem. Anytime, please call, call back anytime, and we'll keep you guys in the loop of how Boise goes and the rest of the season. And hopefully we get close enough we can stop by. Awesome. Well, you have a great night, Jeff, and thanks again. All right. Thank you, guys. You guys have a great night. Okay. Bye-bye.